Hello and welcome to today's live technical analysis. Starting off with the euro against the US dollar. This is why what we said yes, referring to what we said yesterday. Essentially, we keep our support and resistance levels far apart in order to accommodate for some potential extreme moves. Yesterday, the CPI reach for the US unexpectedly ticked up. The core came in uh, 3.8%, which was the same as last figure, implying persistent inflationary pressures in the US economy. Yet the headline CPI rate unexpectedly ticked further, implying an acceleration in inflationary pressures, which appears to have supported the US dollar. Note RS3 level that was validated within the last four hour candle came back down. So this is now S1, it broke down below S1 and S2 since yesterday, which means we need to readjust our support and resistance levels. Essentially S1 and S2 from yesterday now become support turned to resistance and as such, we will be flipping them from support to resistance. It becomes R1. We also note the FOMC's uh, March meeting minutes, which were released late last night. Uh, good morning. What I was just saying is the CPI rates yesterday, core implied persistent inflationary pressures, whereas headline CPI rate accelerated, implying an acceleration in inflationary pressures, which may increase pressure on the Fed to maintain their hawkish stance, which is why this was the release of the CPI rates. It broke below our upwards moving trend line, broke below S1, S2, and came down to S3 that we had noted yesterday. This is what I was telling you yesterday in terms of keeping support and resistance levels a bit further apart, just in case something like this happens. Note, it broke S1, S2, and then bounced off S3 within the last four and a half hours, I would say. So this now becomes S1. Now, since it's broken below our S1 and S2 levels, we maintain a bearish outlook. If it comes back up to R1, I would not switch to a bullish outlook. If it does come back to R1, I would expect that this is a temporary retracement and then continues in its descent. There is size at 30, implying a strong bearish market sentiment. For financial releases today, we're noting the ECB. Now, the ECB is a very interesting story. The ECB usually follows the Fed. So if the Fed is more hawkish, the ECB might be a bit more hawkish. But the difference between the ECB and the Fed is that inflation in the US is at 3.8%, whereas in the Eurozone on average, it's about 2.4. So it's closer to the bank's 2% target. As such, I would personally expect the bank to remain on hold. Their monetary policy statement, so their accompanying statement, to be slightly dovish in nature. And then Lagarde's press conference half an hour afterwards to be slightly hawkish. So countering the effects of a potential dovish statement. But this is pure speculation. We don't know what they're gonna say exactly. We don't know if they are gonna cut. But the majority of market participants are anticipating the bank to remain on hold. 1.0655. Uh, furthermore, the FOMC's March meeting minutes uh, implied that the bank is concerned about persistent inflationary pressures, so it appears to have been relatively hawkish in nature. We have a number of Fed policymakers speaking later on today, so volatility may remain elevated for all dollar denominated pairs, uh, Euro USD, USD JPY. USD JPY is an interesting story as well, given that it's above 153, and we're anticipating a potential intervention by the government in support of the JPY. Now, for the ECB, there is a concern that if you're more dovish than what is needed, you might reach parity with the US dollar, which could inadvertently lead to elevated uh, inflation in the Euro economy. So that might be a bit of a concern. This is why I'm expecting them to remain on hold rather than cut, and why I'm expecting the accompanying statement to be slightly dovish implying that the bank might be nearing its 2% inflation target. And then ECB Lagarde, uh, ECB President Lagarde might be slightly hawkish. And I'm basing that off 
should the accompanying statement be dovish, then she might be hawkish in order to counter the negative effect, the potentially negative effects on the euro. For S3, I'm looking at this price action here. If I take it to this old low, too far away from RS2. So I'd like to use this data here. Note heavy support slash resistance. Taking the openings and closings of candles rather than the wicks for this case. We look further back, we can see that this was a resistance support, excuse me, turned to resistance, acted as support, turned to resistance. So we do have some historical data supporting the potential S3 level that we have. So we have S1, S2, and then for S3, 1.0560. When we're looking at the JPY, the Aussie, given that we had China's PPI and CPI during today's Asian session, uh, they were not as expected. They came in lower. I'll explain and I'll tell you what I would be looking out in tomorrow's Asian session because I think tomorrow's Asian session will be uh, will have some volatility based on the release of China's trade balance. So this is the Euro USD. As we said, broken below S1 and S2, supports turn to resistance, breaking below our upwards moving trend line, RSI 30, bearish outlook and expectation as well that the ECB might be slightly dovish, could further weigh on the euro, breaking below S1, taking aim for S2, and lower than that, we have S3. USD JPY, it's broken above our resistance level. So as we said yesterday, if it does break above R1, we would maintain a temporary bullish outlook. Why is that? It's at 153. Right? It's an all-time high figure. Look, monthly chart. Uh, apologies, it's not an all-time high figure. It's reached levels last seen. Let's see, so 153. Let's just remove the resistance levels. It says 153.226. So it's reached levels last seen in 1990, which is a historic figure. Okay. So one could say that this is a bullish sign for the JPY. But personally, I would expect somewhere around here to see a government intervention. It doesn't seem to be the case currently, but still. For now, you could maintain a temporary bullish outlook, which is what we said before. You have S1, 152.78, and then 153.5, just taking rounded figures now at near 153 154 and then we can take let's see 154.5 so we're keeping it a dollar apart and then 155.50 which was the r3 we had yesterday so our one r2 r3 we're giving it about a dollar in between so some room to move, but then on the other hand, should the government decide to intervene in support of the JPY, I would expect them to use round figures. I wouldn't expect them to see at 153.24 or 0.22. So 153.50 potentially, 153, 154.50. But that remains to be seen. Personally, I find it odd that they haven't intervened yet but i'm not a government official for japan so what we see now bullish sentiment rsi 74 i would maintain a temporary bullish outlook for the particular pair you have your resistance levels defined here we have our temporary support level 
of a swan at 152.78. I'm not going to bring S2 higher. I'm going to be keeping our old support levels and simply add S1. And then add the text, 152. So you have S1 down to S5, temporary support, appears to be bullish. For a bullish outlook to continue, we'll have to break above our one. But as I've said, I would expect somewhere around here to see a government intervention. If we do not, could potentially move up to R2 or even R3, which are hypothetical as well. Resistance figures. But you can actually go back and see if those are valid. Nineteen ninety, so somewhere around here. On the daily chart, the levels we have placed appear to be appear to be validated, so we can use one hundred and fifty four point five, one hundred fifty five, and one hundred fifty three point five zero. So you have S one up and down to S five. Temporary bullish outlook for the dollar against the JPY. USD CAD, strengthening of the US dollar against all, all of its counterparts, broken above R1, close S1. Finding support here, 136.1.365, Then we have R2, which is now R1 at 1.3715. One S2 can be brought to the beginning of the upwards motion. So this British candle here under 1.355. That's too far. 1.356. And then we can readjust S3 slightly higher. 1.3485. Next up, we're going to be looking at the Aussie. Between R1 and R2, we could take this old tie. Wicked. Came back down, so support managed to break below. This low here doesn't coincide, but we can see the price action here, perhaps slight anomaly. And then, yep, validated this as resistance, so not here, not there, but here. So we have R2 at 100, 1.3775. So that's my R2. R3, 1.3840. R1, 1.3710.
S1, 1.3670, S2, 1.356, and then S3, 1.3485. With dollar strengthening, broken below S1 and S2, taking aim for S3 at 1.2470, but I want to look at Yozzy. Once again, I have a look at the chart. We placed the support and resistance levels yesterday together. We said the release of the CPI rates could change everything. It was moving, appeared to be moving in an upwards fashion. Then with one simple financial release, two four-hour candles, bearish candles, broken below S1, S2. And then note how nicely it is resting on S3. 0 0.6507 so this support level we had placed together in yesterday's live so our one s2 and s1 now become resistance s3 becomes s1 so let's place our new support levels as well One, two, three, validated. Look at the price action here. Accumulated by orders, moved higher and pierced up. So this move, similar to here, in which accumulated sell orders and then moved lower. And then let's make this green for S3. So S2 becomes R1. would maintain a bearish outlook for the Aussie. Now, the Aussie is slightly different to the other pairs because you had the release of China's PPI and CPI in today's Asian session. So the impact of the USC pairs appears to have been aggravated by a lower than expected CPI and PPI for China. Essentially, there is a narrative that appears to be merging within, the, within media outlets that China might be on the road of economic recovery. Now, one could also say that China's NBS and Beijing PMI figures also supported that slight hypothesis. Now, if you look in tomorrow, at tomorrow's Asian session on your economic calendar, you have China's trade balance. At a first glance, the trade balance appears to be decreasing by roughly 50 billion, which might not be that of a concern. It's still high. China is a huge country. But if you look at the export trade, it's expected to drop from 7 to minus 3.1. That's what I'm looking at. I wouldn't look at the import rate. So the Aussie depends uh, economically on China to import its raw materials for manufacturing, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But if your export rate drops from 7.1 to minus 3, that is very worrying for your economy. Because if you're manufacturing goods, then one would also assume that you're exporting. them. Because if you're exporting, that means you need more material. Thus, an increase in imports, which could support the Aussie. So from a more macro perspective, we can look at the export rate. It is very concerning if it comes in at minus three. In such a scenario, the Aussie could weigh, it could weigh on the Aussie even further. So if the export rate comes in as expected or even lower, could impact the Aussie as well, as it might imply that China's economic resilience may not be what we were seeing recently. So it might cast some doubt, as such could weigh on the Aussie. So that's what I would be looking out for in tomorrow's Asian session. If you're trading Aussie USD, you have China's trade balance, which is said to be, in my opinion, a big event. Now, if they exceed expectations, then we might see support for the Aussie as well. S2 at 0 0.6444. And if you're wondering if we are placing support and resistance levels properly, and this was S3. This was S3. This was, was an R1. Somewhere around here was our one. Oil. 
this was his, this is s1 r1 so validated support which we had which we had placed together during the live analysis s1 for gold could have been slightly lower but still appearing to have found support so for s3 0 0.6356 now in terms of oil I would be looking at the Aussie for tomorrow's Asian session, the Euro for today's European and American trading session. And overall, I would keep an eye out for oil. Now, we are still anticipating a potential retaliation by Iran against Israel, which could keep oil prices elevated. But the longer that is prolonged, the more we might see some bearish tendencies emerging in oil. So from a fundamental point of view, we could be bullish for oil prices. But from a technical point of view, you can see the narrowing of the Bollinger Bands, the breaking of the opposite trend line, which we had mentioned yesterday, which acts as a resistance level. You can see the price action trailing to break above. You can see it came back down to S1, 84.10. RSI is at 58. So it's at 16 points of bullish market tendencies. But if you look at the price action, it's far it, it's not that convincing if this was moving on the up and up i would have liked to see higher highs and higher lows but the way it's moving now it appears to be moving in a sideways bias between s1 and r1 so from a technical point of view we would maintain a neutral outlook staying between s1 and r1 but we would immediately switch towards a bullish outlook should it manage to break above r1 uh gold now Gold was very interesting in terms of it looked as if it was the only uh, the only instrument that was able to recover its losses made against. So the euro wasn't able to recover the loss after the CPI, neither for the JPY, CAD, pound, Aussie, etc. But if you look at gold, it managed to recoup some of that loss, managed to stay above. 2,332, you have increased geopolitical risk. And that might be outweighing the increase in the, well, not increase, the stronger US dollar. So gold, RSI dipping down to 50, sideways between 2,332 and then 2,336. Simply put, because the dollar was strengthening, but you have elevated geopolitical tensions and risks. As such, gold appears to be holding its own against a stronger US dollar. 2,332 for a swan. I haven't seen FFF for today, but yesterday the market was the markets were anticipating two rate cuts instead of three, further supporting the US dollar. For gold, in terms of geopolitical tensions, now, if a ceasefire agreement is reached between uh, Israel and Hamas, then gold might move lower. There might be some bearish tendencies as geopolitical tensions might be easing. But then if we see a retaliation, gold could also move higher in addition to oil prices. S&P 500 staying sideways between S1 and R1. NASDAQ, same story, S1 and R1, sideways motion. Boeing breaking below S1. As we said, the bad news for Boeing don't seem to be ending. There appears to be a whistleblower as well that came out. Could be further weighing on the company stock price. So this one now becomes R1. Would still maintain a bearish outlook for the company stock price for the foreseeable future. If there is anything you would like to see, now is the time to ask. As long as we can, as long as we offer it as a trading instrument, then we can look at the technical analysis. Airbus dipping below resistance, turn to support. Now turn back, turn back to resistance.
Nvidia bouncing off S1, 833.70, slightly bearish. Tesla sideways between S1 and R1. The robo taxi may have provided some support for the company stock price. It's an interesting switch. IBM dropping below S1. Sun Mobile moving higher. New Zealand dollar, CPI, CPI rates of the US, support and resistance. Disney, Airbnb resting on 15.70. And the last one we're going to be doing today is probably JP Morgan. Earnings on Friday might be interesting. Let's see. Hashtag JPM. Johnson and Johnson. JP Morgan, JP Morgan. There we go. JP Morgan for our chart. Immediately we can spot support around here and then validate it at a later date. So 194.40, that would be my S1. Then we're looking at this low, so the retracement. That could be your S2. Too close given, given the price action, so if we zoom in. See how close? That's far too close to S1. Might be a support level from this old high, but I'd rather place it at this low, 187.50. Why are we trying, why are we opting to go slightly lower? You have earnings. If you vastly exceed expectations, you could move higher. If you come in lower than expected, you have break below. Would have broken below S2 almost immediately, and then this would have been S3. Like, look at the euro. It was up here, and this was our S3. So we're keeping some distance between the price action and the support levels, just in case. So this is S2, and then we're looking to close again. We could use this high, but I'd rather use 178.55. So I've opted for this level. I've seen more, I see more support here. Broke, came down, one, two, three, and the fourth, hammer as well, support. Here, I'd have two touches, whereas slightly lower, we can get three. So I think there is a more, Stronger support level at 178.55. Resistance, I think you can see that as well. Most recent high, wicked candle, wick as well, slight opening of the candle as well. 200.45, so that's R1. And then between S1 and S2, $7, so 207.5. And then 214. Let's put that 0.5. That's one, that's two, that's three. And then you have your resistance levels. If you draw an upwards moving trend line, you could say, yeah, this is a bit bullish. But if you draw from here, one could argue that this has broken the upwards moving trend line. So if it's steeper, that means the rate of acceleration is higher and could more easily be broken, whereas a smoother upwards moving trend line is more, could be more long term. But the issue, you had a high high, but then you made low low, and then this was a lower low. So the bullish momentum might be fading away slightly, which is a bit of a concern.
I wouldn't be bearish for JP Morgan yet, but I wouldn't be exactly bullish either. I would wait to see the, the earnings report from the company. And then, see, narrowing of the bullish bands between S1 and R1, no market volatility, neutral market sentiment. So I would personally say that they're all expecting or waiting for the earnings report to be released. And then the earnings call transcript after that to see the bank's uh, forward guidance. To see the views on the economy for the rest of the year. So if they beat expectations, which they could, bullish, if it comes in lower than expected, bearish, taking aim for us too. Sideways bias to continue would have to stay between would have to stay between S1 and R1. So S1 and R1, so this is S3. R2 turn in 7.5. And then R3 turn of 14. So sideways, as long as it stays between S1 and R1, breaks above R1, bullish, breaks below S1, bearish. And with that, so this is the final chart of the day. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. So welcome to this week's trade management webinar. So today we're going to be talking about trailing stop loss. So as per usual, before we get started, a risk warning. Our products are traded on margin and carry a high level of risk, and it is possible to lose all your capital. These products may not be suitable for everyone, and you should ensure that you understand the risks involved. The information in this webinar should not be considered investment advice or an investment recommendation, but instead educational material only. <clears throat> this material is just the personal opinion of the author and the client's investment objectives and risk tolerance have not been considered. IronFX is not responsible for any loss arising from any information contained herein, and redistribution of the material is strictly prohibited. Okay, so I'm Melody and I am your host for today. I'm an investment analyst from Everest Fortune Group who were finalists for Best FX and Equity Research in the years 2019 to 2021. So here's our agenda for today. Okay, we will firstly talk about the anatomy of a trade followed by some recap of last week and the previous week's um, information, um, some trading, trade management techniques, just a really brief recap on those. And then we'll jump straight into this week's trading stop loss techniques. Um, and we'll look at some examples of them as well. 
And if we have time at the end, we'll also go through a couple of live analysis charts. So feel free to pop into the chat if you have any questions or any requests for any charts that you guys would like to see. Okay. Now let's go ahead and get started. <clears throat> so the anatomy of a trade. Firstly, of course, of course, we have our entry, stop loss and take profit. And then followed by our break even, partial profit, trading stop and idea and validation. So let's look at, I, th I think if you were here in our previous webinar, uh, webinars part of this series, you would know that um you would know what exactly these break even partial profit trading stop means or idea validation run up um but not to worry if you weren't here i'll just do a brief recap right now okay okay so firstly let's look at our take profit stop loss placement recap so we typically would recommend you to place your major, your stop loss beyond a major resistance area and your take profit before a major resistance area. So um, if you're wondering about this, let me just pull up the Forex Army website so that you guys can see. So if you're new to technical analysis, Right. If you're new to technical analysis, um, you can actually just go to this website. Let me just pop into the chat um, in a bit. But go to this website, and then uh, you guys can look at all the different Fibonacci techniques. Um, yeah, here. So we typically will recommend you to place your take profit before a major confluence area, and um after a major confluence area for your stop loss. So in this case, we are looking at a buy entry. In this example that I have here on my slides, obviously we are talking about a sell entry since our take profit is below instead of above. Okay, so I just wanted to pull this out to show you guys um, the variations if you're looking at a buy entry versus if you're looking at a sell entry. So maybe I'll just type out the website in the chat it's the forexarmy.com, okay? Um, yeah, you can go ahead and explore that website on your own. And okay, so we have, we went through this in our very first part of the trade management series. <clears throat> okay, next we're gonna look at break even. So break even is basically a level in which you are in profit and recognize that there is a risk of reversal. So it's basically um, you saying that if you are right, then your price should go all the way to your target. But if it goes back to your entry, then you are wrong and you should get out. So over here, we have an entry at the breakout um, over here. Okay, so we have two multiple swing high resistance uh, resistances and we're going in for our entry at this uh, breakout of these two, this resistance level. <clears throat> okay, so we're hoping for price to push past our take profit, which is over here, our, the green area here. So we take note of our original stop loss, which is below here at this um swing low okay and at point three which is over here that's where our break even was triggered so it's where our break even is triggered because your break even level which is typically in between your um entry and your take profit level so we've chosen this area since it's a, a swing high resistance level okay so we are going in for a buy we're expecting price to rise from our entry all the way to this level here. Okay, and we 
see that price has reversed off of our break even and that's where our break even is triggered so we are going in and moving our original stop loss over to our entry instead okay so you see me keep constantly looking to the side it's because my monitor is over here okay um but yeah so our break even is triggered we are moving our stop loss over to this entry level so that if um, price continues in our favor which you see it originally did okay it's continued broke out of the break even resistance level and hit it towards our take profit then of course that's good news but if it reverses you can get out at break even and your position is protected okay okay so in our second part of the series, we talked about break even and partial profit. So we just talked about break even. Now let's look at partial profit. So partial profit basically means, uh, as the name implies, you get a partial, partial profit of your trade because you are, the trade perhaps didn't meet your expectations, then hit your take profit but it hit halfway or maybe three quarters of your trade. So in this example, we are going in for a buy entry at our first support level. Okay, so our first support level is at the 0 0.68736 level. And our stop loss is placed slightly below that at a overlap overlap support level as you can see there is a swing low here and a swing high here okay so we place our stop loss slightly below that and our take profit is over here at 0 0.70512 and it's at this swing high resistance okay we have a couple of Fibonacci levels to support our levels as well so firstly, we have a 61.8% Fibonacci projection. Okay, that lines up with our take profit. But um, <coughs> excuse me. And then we also notice that we also have a 78.6% Fibonacci projection and a 38.2% Fibonacci retracement that lines up nicely with our partial profit. So if you're thinking, where exactly should you place a partial profit? Firstly, you can pick any levels that's in between your first support and take profit. Um, you can look for levels that have a swing low or swing high. Um, that's basically how you identify levels. Okay, that's the first step. Next, you could maybe look at supporting that level with Fibonacci levels like we have done over here. So you can see our partial profits at this swing low level. Okay, but it's also supported with two Fibonacci levels, making it a pretty significant um, Fibonacci confluence area. Okay, so we're expecting price to rise to our take profit, of course, but there is a strong resistance at this Fibonacci confluence area. So that's why we're placing our partial profit there, just in case price isn't strong enough to push past that area. So you can see price testing this area now. Okay. Um, yeah, so you can see price testing that area um, and it's it's reacting off of it, but we're not sure if it's actually going to pass, um, surpass that area or break out of that area. <clears throat> okay, and you can see that it actually reversed off and hit it back down. So we did get out of our trade with a slight partial profit, even though it didn't hit our take profit. Okay. Next, we have idea and validation. So we went through this last week as the third part of our series. So idea and validation is usually placed before your stop loss. So it's basically the opposite of your um, break even levels. So for break even, we would place our, we would move our stop loss to our entry. But in this case, we are moving our take profit to our entry instead. Okay, if I sound a little bit sick, it's because I'm just recovering. So um, bear with me in that. But okay, so 
it's the level at which you basically admit that you are wrong and you want to get out of the trade ASAP. So when this level is reached, your take profits move to your entry, giving you a small chance to get out at break even. So in this example, we're looking at your entry at this double swing high level. Okay, we see price dropping, reversing off of that resistance and heading downwards to our take profit. You can see how we've placed our take profit before a major um, confluence area or major resistance area. As you can see here, we have three swing lows. So we're placing our take profit slightly above that. Here we see price reverse and it's heading up towards our stop loss. Okay, so um, the point in which your idea and validation is triggered is at this point, um, your idea and validation, as we mentioned earlier, is placed in between your stop loss and your entry level. So we've chosen the swing high level here. So once price hits that level, even if it does reverse back down towards your favor, we're moving our take profit upwards to our entry so that we get out of the trade at break even before price rises even further and stops us out. Okay. Okay. Let's look at some examples now. So in this example, we have a swing low here. And we've placed our buy entry at that swing low. And we have um a Fibonacci, 50% Fibonacci retracement that supports our take profit level. Our take profit level, as you can see here, is an overlap level because we have a swing low and a swing high that line up nicely at that level. Okay. So you can see our entry. Yep, so our entry is at that level. And um, now we are going in with our Fibonacci extensions as well as expansions. So if you look, if you're not familiar with the, what those are, um, we basically go through those in our Fibonacci series. Um, but you can also check them out on the forexarmy.com, which is the website that I have included uh, in our chat. Okay, but basically you can see how our 127.2 and the minus 27% line up nicely. So I'll show you guys in a little bit um, during our live analysis session how you can obtain these, these levels, okay? Okay, but um, yeah, for now, you just look at these levels, see how they're aligning. That's basically giving us a Fibonacci, um, Fibonacci confluence area, okay? So... Yep, so you can see entry and our price. So we're placing our stop loss below our Fibonacci confluence area here. Just like we mentioned, we always want to place our stop loss beyond any confluence areas. Okay. And now our idea and validation, we are placing exactly at that level. Okay, so if price breaks out of our entry, hits downwards towards our stop loss, Okay, at least during when it hits our idea and validation, we will get out at break even. You can see that's exactly what happened over here. Okay. And then once it hits our idea and validation, we then move our take profit down towards our entry. Okay, so that we get out at break even. That's basically it. Um, yeah, so if we didn't do that, price would have stopped us out because price actually continued to drop. Okay, so now let's look at this week's topic, which is our trailing stop loss. Okay, so trailing stop loss is basically a type of stop loss order that is set at a certain percentage or dollar amount away from the market price. The idea behind a trading stop loss is to lock in profits while giving the trade room to breathe. 
as the stop loss follows the market price as it moves in favor of the trade. So um, this example that I have over here is um, in terms of stock prices. But it's just to give you an idea of how it works. So let's say you buy a stock at $100 and you set a trading stop loss at $10. As the stock price rises to $110, the stop loss will follow now at $100 um, because $110 minus $10. So if the price... If, Excuse me. If the stock price drops to $100, your stop loss will trigger selling your position and protecting your profits. The trading stop loss technique can be useful for traders because it allows them to manage risk and lock in profits dynamically as the market moves. Okay, so this is different from a fixed stop loss, which is set at a specific price and does not change as the market moves. So it's important to note that the trading stop loss is not a guarantee that you will exit a trade at the desired price. Market conditions such as gaps or rapid price movements can trigger stop loss order before it reaches the desired level, leading to an unexpected exit from the trade. Therefore, it's important to use trailing stop loss in combination with a solid risk management strategy. So if you combine this with all of the methods that we've mentioned above um, and throughout the past three webinars, um, you're pretty much set for your trade management strategy. Okay, so here are the different methods of a trading stop loss. You can see we have moving averages, chandelier, um, parabolic SAR, ATR, so on and so forth. Okay, even support and resistance levels and a combination of these methods. So let's go through our first example, which is the moving average. So in this example, we are going in for our cell entry at this, uh, this level here, with the 1.57891 level. Okay, so once price breaks out of that area, then we're going in for a sell. And the reason for that is because you can see that we have an ascending trend line. Okay, so what makes an ascending trend line valid is if there are three touches on it. You can see very clearly over here, we have one, two, and three. Okay, and on our third point, you can see price breaking out of that ascending trend line and also breaking below that uh, overlap support level, okay? So it's breaking below it, and um, we're going in for a sell. So you can see here, price has continued to drop, okay? And price is moving below our moving average, which is typically a sign that a bearish signal, okay? If price moves below your moving average, it's typically a bearish signal. And once you see price cross over your, indi your indicator, <clears throat> that's a sign that, um, that the trend might change and that's when your trading stop loss is triggered. Excuse me. Okay, so that got us out of the trade before price started to move upwards. Okay, pretty self-explanatory. Now let's look at a trend line breakout. So we have one trend line here, but we have another one over here, as you can see. <clears throat> okay, and so price, price is moving in um, in this descending trend line and we see price breaking out of our descending trend line. So that's um, that's typically a sign that trend is going to change as well and your trend line trading stop loss is triggered so you get out of your trade, yeah, of your selling trade. Okay, if we look at our parabolic SAR, pretty similar in logic, I guess. Um, in this case, we see price moving below the indicator, so it's also a um, bearish signal, 
And then we start to see price um, giving us this, you know, price moving above our parabolic star. So it's giving us a bullish signal. And then we see price um, crossing over our indicator. So then our parabolic star trading stop loss is triggered. Okay. Now, if we look at chandelier and ATR trailing stop loss, okay, um, we have our sell entry sim um, at that same spot, okay, and price is moving below these indicators, so it's a bearish signal, and once price crosses over these indicators, our ATR stop is triggered, chandelier stop is triggered, and you get out of the trade. Okay, pretty um, self-explanatory there. Uh, yeah, so if we combine different indicators, obviously your stop loss, your trailing stop loss would be more effective. So here we see our moving average um, indicator being used. So price is breaking below our sell entry as well as our moving average. So it's giving us a bearish signal. So we're going in for a buy or rather for a sell towards our take profit. And you can see um, we've placed our fixed stop loss over here, right at this swing, swing high here. Okay, but we're going in for a sell towards our take profit. And once price um, crosses over the moving average indicator, that's a sign for us to get out of the trade because it's typically a sign that the trend is changing. Okay, uh, similarly for this example as well. Hmm. Okay, using breakouts as trading stop loss. So breakouts are usually high volatility events and price can spike up and reverse almost as quickly. So stop loss will help you to manage risk and protect your capital. Um, and a trailing stop loss can help you to protect your profit. So in this example, we're using chandelier and ATR. Okay, so um, we see, and we're also, oh, we're also using support and resistance here. Okay, so you can see that we're going in for maybe a buy entry here. Okay, so we're seeing price moving above our indicators, which is a bullish signal. Once price kind of starts to cross over each other, that's a sign that the trend is going to change. Similarly, over here, we are using support and resistance to highlight the different levels that we want to pay attention to. Um, and then we're seeing price moving above the um, the indicators. So once again, a bullish signal. And once price crosses below the uh, in this case, I, it's a resistance. Okay, so once price crosses over this resistance level, and it also crosses over our indicator, that's a sign that price is that the trend is about to change. Similarly, for this example, this example we are using a moving average indicator instead. Okay, but it's the same concept. You see price, um. Moving above the indicator, it's a bullish indi bullish signal that's moving below. You can see it's a bullish, a uh, bearish signal. Um, and if it crosses over, it's typically a sign that um that the trend is about to change. Okay, okay, that's about it for my slides. Uh, we still have a bit of time left, so we can take a look at some charts. Let me just pull up my charts really quickly. Okay. Let's maybe go ahead and look at gold first. 
Okay. Um... Okay, so starting off, we're going to look at our weekly time frame. Okay, so on our weekly time frame, okay, let me just make sure that, okay, okay. So on our weekly time frame, okay, this is what our charts look like. It's pretty bearish, okay. Um, on our daily time frame, also pretty bearish, okay. Now let's look at our four hour time frame, okay. First, on our daily time frame, let's add some um support and resistance levels. So, firstly. Um, this is our first resistance. Okay, and then our first support. And maybe a second support here. Okay, now let's look at our four hour time frame. Okay, um, I think this would be my first support instead now because it's closer to where price is at. And then this would be my second support. Okay, now let's go in with some uh, Fibonacci levels. Okay, I'm first going to go in with hmm, first going to go in with a Fibonacci projection. So I have my 61.8% that lines up nicely with my first resistance. Okay, and next let's go in with a retracement. So my 38.2 lines up nicely with my 61.8. Um, Okay, and over here I can see this level, 50% lines up with the 23.6. So I'm just going to keep those two as well. Okay. So I'm actually going to add a level here because this is an intermediate level. Okay, because I have Fibonacci confluence area here and I also have some swing highs over here. Okay, now let's go in with some indicators. Okay, price is moving above our Ichimoku cloud, so it doesn't support our bearish analysis, but on our MACD, it is bearish. 
So I just get rid of our Ichimoku. Now let's look at RSI. Okay, RSI um, isn't telling us much. Let's look at stochastic. Okay, um, on our stochastic, we are seeing a bearish. A bearish divergence. Okay, so between these two lines, you can see price is pretty, um, price has stayed the same level at our first support. But on um on our stochastic, okay, it gives us a price is making a lower low. Okay, so that's a bearish divergence. Now let's look at moving averages. Let's look at MA symbol and exponential. Okay, price is moving below both of these indicators, though it does look like price is breaking out of our EMA or uh, SMA. So I might remove that. Okay, because it doesn't support our analysis. Okay, that's about it for our dollar franc. Okay, so we will definitely see price um testing this level a bit okay we'll see price testing this level because of the confluence area as well as the overlap levels but um yep i think it ultimately, it will continue in the downward because of the downward pressure. Okay. Um, I think we still have a bit of time left, so let's look at gold. Okay, same thing, we're going to look at the higher time frames first. Yeah, I think this video, this um, because this webinar is being recorded, so I think they will upload this onto YouTube. So I think you will be able to get it there. But if not, I think you can email the Iron FX team and they'll be happy to help you out. But it is being recorded, so you should be should be on YouTube. Okay, so on our weekly time frames, um, we can see it's pretty bullish, right? On our daily time frame, okay, on our daily time frame, we can't really tell because it's kind of um trending. Okay, now let's just go in with our support and resistance levels first. Okay, and for my first support, we need here. Okay, and okay, now on our four hour time frame, 
think most of these levels still hold up on our forward home frame. But I think instead, I want to place my first support here instead. Okay. Uh, second resistance, maybe here. Okay, now let's go in with our Fibonacci levels again. So I can see my 78.6 lines up nicely. Uh, I want to see if my 61, no. If my 61.8 lines up with any other important uh, Fibonacci levels. Okay, so I will test that in a bit. Now let's look at uh, uh, projection. So I have 61.8. Okay, all of these levels price has already broken out of. So that's no longer valid. Um, So I think that's all the levels that we have. Okay, my 61.8 lines up nicely and my 50% as well. Okay. That's all the levels that we have here. I'm actually going to remove the 61.8 because I can't find any other levels to match up with that as well as our 50%. Okay, now let's go in with our indicators. Um, I'm going to use MACD, Ichimoku, and RSI again because at one glance you can see exactly what the signals are. So on our uh, Ichimoku, you can see that price is moving below the Ichimoku cloud, so it's giving us a bearish signal. On our MACD, you can see it is giving us a bit of a bullish signal, so I'm just going to remove that. Okay, on our RSI, um, Okay, price is actually giving us a bullish signal here. Okay, because it is breaking out of a the descending trend over here. So I'm going to move that. Uh, let's see. Oop. Let's look at moving averages. Okay, price is moving below both of the moving averages, so it supports our bearish signals. And let's look at Bollinger Bands. Okay, Bollinger Bands aren't really telling us much. So I'll remove that. Okay, uh, let's look at Stochastic. Okay, Stochastic gives us a descending trend line so that also supports our bearish signal okay so because there are so many indicators it's important to just pick a couple that you are comfortable using and that you know how to use properly um yep and it just sip through those few after you're done doing your fibonacci as well as graphical analysis and then yeah just go from there so if majority of your chosen indicators give you an opposite signal of what you are going for then maybe you can go back and check your analysis again but normally if you've done it properly um most should support your own analysis maybe not all like you've seen over here um rsi didn't support rsi and like didn't support this analysis but um you can see that my stochastic, my moving averages, as well as my Ichimoku all support my analysis. So 
yeah, let me know if you guys have any other questions. Okay, if there are no other questions, uh, that's it from me for today. Thank you guys so much for joining me. I am so sorry for my voice. Um, I'm just recovering from the flu, but I will be better next week, hopefully. And I'll see you guys then. Have a great rest of your week, everyone. Bye. No worries, I'm sure I'll be better by next week. Thank you. Bye, guys.